All right, we speak now to UK ZN Historical Studies lecturer Kultula uh, Twyla to speak about a um, uh, day of reconciliation. And now, a very good evening to you, and thank you so much for speaking to us. We were just talking about the relevance of this day and its impact over the years, at least since its inception. What have been your thoughts around it and, and what room for improvement exists? Thank you very much, uh, So Good evening to the viewers and thanks for having me. Well, uh, I think there are two sides to the issue of reconciliation in South Africa. Firstly, if you remember that South Africa is part of Africa, like all other countries in Africa who have been the victims of a colonial project. But then talking about the issue of reconciliation in South Africa, I think it was the deliberate attempt uh, by those who participated in the negotiations that uh, which were leading to the path of our democracy to make South Africans to embrace and to hold on to the spirit of togetherness and bury the, our painful past. I've said to you that there are two sides of it. I'm saying this because uh, there are families who are still saying that a reconciliation has not worked for them, largely because uh, there are family members who are the victims of uh, many atrocities <clears throat> that were meted against their family members have still not yet been considered to an extent that they are happy. But at the same time, there were so many, there are so many positives that we can be proud of as South Africans. Hmm. I mean, the question also is, what are we reconciling with? If you look at present day South Africa, and you talk about the so-called uh, born free or Gen X, what they are contending with, what they see as needing to reconcile with, is a totally different abstract matter to those who uh, were you know, say the youth of 1976, those who uh, lived under apartheid, the vestiges of which still hugely remain in society. Is that part of the problem that even in talking about Reconciliation Day, we are not united on what we are trying to reconcile with? Yes, as I said to you, there are people who still feel that we are not yet reconciled as a nation. Some people are saying, you cannot tell me that I must reconcile with you when the most painful things that we have done against me have not been uh, resolved to my satisfaction. And that is number one. And number two, you have spoken about other groups who still feel that they are still sidelined. And I can... Uh, insist that there is still a very long way to go before we can talk about full reconciliation, not forgetting that there has been some brave attempts to try and forge such a reconciliation. There are many examples to talk about uh, that lack of reconciliation. For instance, uh, in, 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 in very recently during the uh, the wave of civil unrest in 2020, in July 2021, uh, uh, Africans would say that they were the, uh, on the receiving end of that lack of uh, reconciliation because they were the ones, remember what happened in Phoenix, you still have people who died there just because they were Africans and they feel that, no, this thing of reconciliation does not happen for them and it will never happen for them. But I'm also talking about the socio-economic challenges that people face with which for them is uh, the greatest um, obstacle to enjoying a democratic so South Africa. So the policies of the governing party um, are something just, I'm going to use this as an example, speaking to uh, Kosati earlier on and about an announcement that was made earlier on. Just talking about load shedding, its impact on people, joblessness is a huge issue. Uh, the plunging quality of life. Can Reconciliation Day perhaps even start talking about those things instead of 
uh, continuing to speak about the uh, same things over and over again because we're certainly not very close in terms of unifying South Africans. Well, you are very correct, Tsepi. So there's simply no equilibration in terms of the livelihoods of uh, the historically oppressed. They still feel that they are still oppressed due to the number of challenges we have just alluded to. And then talking about the issue of reconciliation, others are just taking it as if it, it can be used as, uh, as a ploy by the ruling party to keep on running and just to forge ahead as if uh, nothing is wrong. But when you get the feeling of the people on the ground, that is exactly how they express themselves in terms of the huge inequalities. Uh, the legacy of apartheid is just far too bigger than the actual reconciliation. And for some people, uh, reconciliation is nowhere near them and they will leave this world without having uh, realized the reconciliation as a reconciliation could be understood in the real sense. Mm, but there are some um, good things or good stories to tell about the South Africa now because a lot of people who were excluded um, are now included. They're able to uh, pretty much um, attain freedom of association, live where they want. And even though we're talking about uh, the inequities, how there is a, you know, a, a widening Gini coefficient, but what are the positives that South Africans can look back on and say, you know, we are taking it a step at a time? Yes, as I've already indicated in the beginning, there are positive steps. Remember, uh, South Africa has been a battlefield for all races. You had whites fighting among themselves. They reconciled and uh, we, you had uh, black on black violence. And the worst steps that were taken, for instance, the very uh, existence of the weight or the name of a government of national unity, which uh, was man, uh, exemplified by the deployment of uh, ministers from diff uh, different political parties, uh, which filled out down to the provinces, particularly the province of the reconfigured Guazulu Natal, where people were hoping that when uh, those former enemies were working together, there was going to be a chance of uh, realizing harmony. That is why uh, those steps resulted in South Africa being able not to follow in the footsteps of countries such as Rwanda and Burundi, where we saw genocide along ethnic lines in the May. But then we did not see a, a brutality that was meted to the former oppressors because of the tall figures who were playing part, namely Nelson Mandela uh, and, and others who followed in his footsteps. There are indeed positives that can be said. Well, we really thank you for your time. Kutula uh, Twala is a historical studies lecturer um, at UKZN, just talking about Reconciliation Day.